cars are amazing. You can buy so many different types these days. You can buy very practical cars. You could buy cars that are very noisy. You could buy cars that even convert or transform. And you can even buy cars that you can sleep in. And they've all got one thing in common, and that is one of these, an engine. And unfortunately, engines actually produce things that we really, really shouldn't breathe in that go straight into the atmosphere. So the government has set a target in the UK that all new cars registered from 2035 or 2040 onwards are going to be all electric. And sure, you can buy an electric car now, but what happens if you don't want to take the plunge and go for a fully electric car? Maybe you want to go half and half. And this is where a hybrid comes in. A hybrid has two ways of propulsion. It has an engine that we all know and love, but also has an electric motor and a battery. Now, before we go any further, I should just make this clear. There are several types of hybrids out there. This video focuses on what's known as a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, also known for short as a FEV. So the most effective way of charging a plug-in hybrid is of course, plugging it in at nighttime while you sleep. So in the house, there are two ways of doing this. Number one is plugging it into the wall directly uh, via a three pin socket. Now this socket is the same one you use to charge, say your phone or plug your kettle into. It just plugs straight into the wall and you can do it that way. This is known as a slow charge. The other way is via a wall box, which is a fast charge. So this is what the charging cables look like. On the left is the slow charger and on the right is the fast charger. Charging times are approx 5.5 hours for the slow one and 1.75 hours for the fast one. So what about charging costs for an A250e? Well, there's a couple of ways of getting electricity into the battery. So you can do it using fuel, but fuel is not the most efficient way of doing it because if you think of the average price of fuel in the UK, it's about £1.10, £1.15 pence per litre. And the average price of electricity is 15 pence per kilowatt. Now those two numbers on their own out of context don't sound like much. So if you bear with me, I have actually done some maths. So if you take 15 pence per kilowatt, the average price of the UK electricity, times the battery size of the A250e. So it's 15 pence times 10.6 kilowatt hours. That's one pound 59 to charge the A250e. Now, the range of the car goes up to about 46, 48 miles, but those are in the ideal conditions. So let's say you went from Poole, where we are right now, to Southampton, which is 36.5 miles, and you hit some traffic and you had your air conditioning on. That journey would cost £1.59. So the same journey for diesel would be £3.32, and the same for petrol would be £5.22. And this is where the savings come from in terms of running costs. The first part of your journey, you know, and up to 30, 40, if you're really careful, up to 45 miles are going to be really, really cheap because you're using electricity, which came from the mains, which is really cheap and not the fuel that costs £1.10, £1.15 pence per litre. So what else is really cool about hybrids is that the first part of the journey, because they run on electricity, they are virtually silent. Right then guys, what I thought we'd do is we'll actually take the A250e out on the open road just so you can see what it's like from the driver's point of view actually driving a hybrid. 
And to be honest, apart from there not really being an engine on for the first part of your journey, it's virtually the same. So if you put your foot on the brake pedal, press the engine start stop button just over here, have a listen. If you heard it, there was a little click from the engine, but that was pretty much it. But notice most importantly, it says ready over here on the left hand side of the dashboard. So when it says ready, you treat the car as if the engine's on. So gear stick, I literally just go down for drive. The handbrakes just come off and we're good to go. Now, of course, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the first part of your journey is always done in electric. Unless you change the settings, um, it will always default to this. Now in terms of power on the electric alone, it is very, very, very powerful. So what we'll do, we'll just come to a rolling start here. We'll get to about 15 miles an hour and accelerate. You can see here, it doesn't actually take long. I mean, it's not as powerful as a fully electric car, but there's enough power to get you going. Now one thing to note obviously on hybrids, as I mentioned before, the first part of your journey is always done on electric, unless you change the settings otherwise. But of course you can change the drive modes, and that's done using a switch called Dynamic Select just down here. And you can move this up and down to control different things. So you can put it into Eco mode, which will uh, basically save some fuel. Battery level will keep the battery's current state of 91% as it is at the moment, ready for a future time. Electric, which I'm currently on at the moment, which is the one that basically runs in electric all the time, so it will never switch on the engine. Then you've got the default mode, which is comfort. Comfort is the one the car will start up in every day by default. And comfort basically just smooths out the gear changes and we'll switch on the engine when necessary. Of course then the final one, sport mode, will use the electric motor and the engine combined together to give you lots and lots of power. So there's loads of modes obviously to choose from depending on your driving scenario. At the moment I quite like electric because I haven't even switched the engine on yet, it's super, super quiet. You could almost whisper in here. There we go guys, that is a brief overview on how hybrids work, more specifically a plug-in hybrid. Of course, as I mentioned, you've got your electric motor and engine, and while you're running on electric, it's always cheaper per mile. As I said, it's a brief overview, we could talk about hybrids all day long, but if you have any comments or questions, do leave them down in the comments section down below, and if you liked today's video, give it a like and subscribe if you aren't already. Until next time, we'll see you then.